This morning we're going to uh, go into Scripture, into the Old Testament. Hey, y'all, you know, I, I go there every now and then. Don't want to be a stranger. Uh, going into Psalms. Uh, Psalms 37. Give y'all a chance to get there. The Lord led me to this, not just because of what I've been going through, but because I've looked out there at what's going on in the world. And I can see, and, and this addresses some issues that I've talked with Greg about. Uh, you know, it, it really hits on all cylinders. It, and uh, I'll just get into it. We'll read it and we'll go with it wherever the Lord wants. Psalm 37, a psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. <coughs> Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of a man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise evil to any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth. Heard that before, haven't we? Didn't Jesus say that? But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. <coughs> <clears throat> their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. And the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. 
Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them, he should deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. <coughs> Little redneck here, but ain't that good? Praise the Lord. I know that in this world we look out and we see people doing things that we know are wrong. And they appear to be prospering. Well, they're, they're cheating on their taxes. They're, they're taking shortcuts. They aren't doing things the, the, way, the, the right and moral way. They're, any way they can get done what they're doing, they're, they're trying to get it done. They don't care who they run over. If they thought they could get an extra hundred dollars for selling their mother, they would. There's people. There's people like that. And, it, and some some it's not money. Some it's drugs. Some it's alcohol. Some it's sex. Some it's whatever. Whatever they put in front of God. That's what they want. And that and if you get in their way, they won't think twice about treading you down. And, and here scripture says, they won't even hear you. They won't listen to you. They'll seek to get rid of you because they don't want to hear what you're saying. They don't want to hear the truth. Oh, but God makes a promise. He'll deliver us from the wicked because we trust in Him. He says, what they've got's not going to last better to have a little and be righteous than to have a lot and be wicked. This is a place that we walk through. We're strangers in a strange land. We're just passing through this earth. This is where we get to make a decision. Yeah, there's a lot of decisions to be made out there. But there is one decision that we have to make. There are people that will deny we even have to make the decision, and they've already made it. There are people who deny, who say, well, I can't make up my mind. I'll sit here right in the middle while they've made their decision. The decision is, are you going to worship God or not? Are you going to accept the salvation, the gift of salvation that he offers freely? Because the Bible's quite clear. All have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. Nobody's worthy of it. We aren't worthy of anything from God except death. That's the price of sin. Yet he loved us so much. So much. That he sent his son to die for us. To take that burden for us. So that all we have to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe that he's raised from the dead. Confess from mouth, your mouth that he is Lord and you're saved. That's so simple. There are no set laws that we have to follow. We follow the law of love, do we not? How said is that? Well, Jesus said it. He said, uh, love the Lord thy God with everything you got. Heart, mind, body, spirit. Everything you got. Love the Lord. And the second law is likened to it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two hang all of the law and the prophets. 
You can take those Ten Commandments and you can sit there and you can read a commandment and you can slap it right up there. Is this about loving God or loving our neighbor? It's going to fit under one of those two. That's where all the law is. What about what the prophets were teaching? What, trying to bring Israel back from their erring ways. Everything the prophets talked about follow, falls under those two laws. The law of love, the law of charity. The Bible uses charity and love interchangeably. <coughs> and this is where we need to be. We don't need, we don't necessarily need to let people run us over. But we do need to stand on what's right. If people want to laugh at us and mock us, that's their choice. God gave them free will so they could accept or refuse his love, which means they can accept or refuse the message. But this choice that we make, about whether we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. This choice is the only choice that we have that has eternal consequences. See, when we think about eternal, we think, oh, that's forever. And you know, we really, when we think about that, we really don't, we really don't, quite have that right because you see God is eternal God's infinite no beginning and no end <coughs> time had a beginning in the beginning and there's going to come a time when time will be no longer time started and time is going to end What's past, what is past time when time no longer exists? Eternity. My mind boggles just even trying to think about that. And we'll be there with God, with Jesus. We will be there in love in worship. He gives us a picture of what it's going to be. You can go to Revelation 21 and 22, last two ver chapters of the Bible. A new heaven, a new earths. This is what he's going to he's going to recreate everything and it will be perfect. Sin will be gone forever. And we'll still have our free will. I mean, we could defy God, but we won't want to because we'll love Him. I mean, theoretically we could, but you know, isn't, it, isn't it what the sci some scientists say? Theoretically, anything's possible. Well, anything's possible, but how probable is it? Hey, I make through the first resurrection, and I see that white throne judgment. I'm, I love the Lord. He saved me from that. I'm not even, I would, I'd never think about going against him. A freely giving, and a freely given gift. What did I have to do for it? Humble myself. Admit I was wrong. And that's what it's about, church. You're going to see in these days. You're going to see it in the news, you're going to see man's loss of love for mankind, how they treat each other. You're going to see outrageously crazy stuff. It's out there already. I mean, it used to be if I wanted to see news of the weird, there, there's a few internet sites that, that specialize in weird news, and it's, it gets kind of weird. But you know that weird news that used to be out there? They don't even consider that weird news anymore. That's now getting mainstream. You're starting to see it on the Drudge Report. That's like picking up the Wall Street Journal and seeing it read like the National Enquirer. That's how bad things are getting. 
because people have taken their focus off of Jesus. That's why this nation's where it is, because too many people don't believe. They want to believe in their freedoms. They think that the fun is done when they're a Christian. If you become a Christian, your fun is done, and it and it's all these rules. Hey, what what rules are there? Love. Love the Lord and love your neighbor. How simple can it get? Yeah, well, there, you've got all these Christian denominations out there, and they believe all these different things. Well, let me give you a quote here. Let me give you a quote from a Methodist, founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, said, In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. And in all things, charity. If someone believes that Jesus came down in the flesh, lived, died, crucified, buried, rose on the third day, and is now at the right hand of God, and that good works should follow their salvation, and they're trying to live that law of love, that's the essentials, is it not? Everything else, I can agree to disagree with you. Whether, and it won't matter. What matters is we're saved, we're worshiping the same God, and we're going to get to see Jesus together. You open your arms. Charity. I'm not going to argue with someone about whether they believe in a pre-tribulation rapture or not. It's it's kind of it's kind of like kissing a mule. And I'm not picking on pre-trib rapturists, but uh, you know when I say kissing a mule, I you know the the mule enjoys it, and you only lower yourself. Uh, I'm not picking on them, but a lot of them are like that. They won't hear what you have to say. They are so emotionally caught up in what they're doing, they won't look at Scripture or what you have to say. So I, won't, I, don't, look, I don't look to discuss it with them. I say, well, you believe that, that's fine. I'm going to love you. I'm going to have that charity anyhow. It's not something that's essential to be saved. You have the liberty to believe that, and I have the charity to let you believe that. Too many Christians out here who, can't, who cannot take that point of view. We have people in this church that have come out of the Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, Advent Christian Church, <coughs> Presbyterian Church, Catholic Church, Church of God, and probably three or four other churches that I haven't even thought of. We've had people from all of, all of those places. And what's the one thing that they can take home from this church? Jesus loves you. We love you, and you're welcome to come back here and worship with us anytime you want. If you're my brother and sister in Christ, you're my brother and sister in Christ. Just because we differ a little, hey, the Bible compares the, Bible compares the church to the body. A hand don't see the world the same way a foot does or a knee does. Each one of them thinks they're the most important part of the body. And at some point, the head says, uh, yeah, right, and, and, and straightens them out. The, the, head, the head will fix it all. And Jesus is our head, is he not? So church, don't despair when you, when you see things out there that you see people that you know aren't are not living a Christian life, and they're prospering. You see 
things going on and you say, how can man do this to mankind? Well, it's simple. They have a lack of Jesus. Don't have a lack of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Follow what He tells you to do. Do it. Be, be a light out there to that world. It's what it needs right now is for all of us to be a light. Church, that's all I got for you. Danny, you got anything? He's grinning. He, the Lord has blessed Danny with this message. So stand and live. If I can get <coughs> fight the pollen long enough. Morning, church. Morning. As <laughs> some of y'all might know, I've been visiting a local church on the odd Tuesday once in a while. Since they needed a technology man, and I'm apparently the only one <laughs> in the county they know now, so they're going high tech. And just to say that comes with its pitfalls. <laughs> That's not what we're here to talk about. Technology talk hurts my head sometimes. But this last week, brother that goes there when he can, I've gotten to know the man. He's a like-minded to myself. He's a, one of those technology types who's uh, big into looking for alternative sources of energy. He loves the Lord. You can see it in his eyes and the way he worships. On fire for God. But this past week I got to see a little bit of a different side of him. One minute he was on, on fire for God, and then the next minute he kind of had this overwhelming depression, you know? You ever see people just change like that? Go from being excited and happy to just got a dark cloud over him? You need to keep a brother in your prayers. The Lord knows who he is. He's going through some tough times. Well, where am I getting to? Temptation. He's facing some temptation right now. It's really dragging him down. It's easy getting temptation. <laughs> There's an old Chinese proverb. I don't know exactly how it goes. It's been a while since I've heard it. But it goes along the lines of there's this old man and he was out in the field meditating by himself. <coughs> and suddenly this little girl comes up to him and asks him, Mr. What are you doing? And he says, I'm out here meditating. Trying to keep balance of the, the, the karmas, and she's like, and she asks him, "What's that mean?" And she says, "Inside," and he says, "Inside of us, each and every one of us all, there's two wolves. They like to fight: a black one and a white one. The black one is the darkness, and the despair, the hatred, the anguish, the sorrow, and the white one is the joy." The, happiness, the love, the kindness, the meekness, the humbleness, the holiness. <clears throat> and these two wolves like to fight each other and it's a constant battle. As long as you're on this earth, it's a constant battle. They're always at each other's throats, day in and day out. And the little girl asks, well, which one wins? And 
And the old man looks at her and says, whichever one you feed the most. Ain't that true? You're like, I don't know if you don't know what to do with cows, but you got two calves and, and one of them gets fed well from the mother and the other one gets shunned or kicked around and, and pushed out of the way. Which one's gonna, what's gonna happen? One of them's gonna grow up to be a bit stronger than the other one pretty quick, ain't it? I know for a fact, in the years and years we've had cows, it, <laughs> you can get one that'll be the runt and sometimes, and one that'll be bigger than the other one because he's getting fed better. <coughs> Let's go to Matthew. Chapter 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Ain't that true? There's your wolves. The spirit and the flesh. Black and white. Isn't the spirit always in turmoil with the flesh? The spirit wants one thing and the flesh wants another thing. <coughs> it happens to the best of us. <laughs> How good that, 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 you got that nice cake there, it tastes so good, and you'd want to eat the whole thing after dinner, but you know you ought not to. Or <laughs> you're on a diet and that T-bone steak would be real good right now, but you know your doctor said not to. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, just one little nibble. And that's how you start feeding the other wolf. Just one, just this once. And like I said, the more you feed one animal, the less you're feeding the other. The more you feed one wolf, the less you're feeding the other. So, all right, give into this temptation just as once and have just a little bit of whatever it is, whether it be food, whether it be drugs, whatever. Pretty soon, it's just a little more time. And you keep doing that, and you keep doing that, and eventually, you won't even care anymore. Uh, You've already fed that wolf too much. The, the other one's so little you can't even see him no more. And some people will do it without even realizing it. <coughs> <coughs> That's how Satan works. <laughs> it takes whatever is your weakest. Whatever is your weakest temptation. That's what he takes and that's what he uses. Because he knows that's what you'll be prone to want to feed on, Lord. Get that beast of the flesh riled up. <laughs> like you see in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that ye may... Stand against the walls of the devil. The whole armor. That's what Satan goes after. Them little chinks, chinks in that armor. Alcoholism. There's a. It's always a weak spot in that armor. Somebody who's had a problem with alcohol in the past and has gotten into church. <laughs> It don't take any uh, long for it. everybody who's everybody who, who's known him in the past has tried to get him to take a drink, right? And that's Satan trying to use that weak spot in their armor against them. All he's got to do is get a little crack. A little crack's all it takes. It's so easy. So what do we do <coughs> when we're tempted? Mm -hmm. 
sometimes it's hard to hard question to answer. If you look in Hebrews chapter, we're all over the place, ain't we? We're just going to jump around. A little shotgun. Shotgun sermon. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren. I'm talking about Jesus here. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. You get something bothering you, something poking you in the side, pray. Focus on Jesus, not whatever's tempting you. Focus on him, and he can take it from you. You will not allow Satan to tempt you more than what you can shoulder to bear. And again, in John, chapter 16, verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that ye might have peace in the world. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We're going to be able to avoid temptation, tribulation. There's always going to be something. We've all got something that's always talent tail behind us. It don't matter who you are or how big you are behind the pulpit or how big a name you are on TV. <laughs> There's always something kneeling at your ankles. There's always a, a, a beast, little beast somewhere trying to get you to feed it. <laughs> but be of good cheer. Jesus was tempted and he, and he overcame. So as long as he's on our side, as long as you're keeping focus on what's important, as long as you're praying to Jesus, well... <laughs> You can avoid the temptations. Don't feed the wrong animal. <laughs> That's all I've got, church. You told me to shut my mouth now. I would add just one scripture to what Danny said. It's in First Corinthians, the tenth chapter, the thirteenth verse. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. That's a promise from God. If you're being tempted, talk to Him. He'll show you how to get out of it. He said, People always said, God will never put more on you than you can bear. Yeah, if he needs to break you down, he will. But when it comes to, tempt, to you being tempted, he won't allow you to be a He said, you'll be able to handle it. And if you think you can't, there, I've got a way out for you. Praise the Lord. It's been a good place to be. Anybody, anything else?